Hello, I'm Miles O'Brien. Welcome to the Dassault Aviation Hangar at Le Bourget Airport in Paris. We are here for a special virtual unveiling. Nearly 60 years after the Falcon 20 rolled out and changed the world of business aviation, another new Falcon model is about to be revealed and is set to change things once again. It is a Falcon that will once again exceed expectations. Joining me now to talk a lot about this is the chairman and CEO of Dassault Aviation, Eric Trappier. Eric, good to see you again. Good evening, Miles, and good evening, everyone. Uh, I would say good morning to those who are living in the US or America. It's a wonderful moment. Uh, and frankly, I think everybody's a little impatient to see the new bird. The aircraft is still a few years from taking shape in the real world. But through the magic of augmented technology, we have placed it in a virtual way in this hangar. Eric, why don't you do the honors? Yes, up to today, the name was the Annex, was a coded name, and uh, I am quite uh, happy to announce you that the new Falcon is going to be the Falcon 10X. Eric, it's uh, just spectacular. Congratulations. I know this all begins for you with a lot of conversations with your customers. Uh, yes. What, is, what did they tell you? What were they asking for? They, they start with the range, and uh, they ask us to have a kind of ultra-long-range Falcon, and this is going to be the case with the Falcon 10X, with a 7,500 nautical miles range. But it's also comfort. When you are traveling for a long time, you need to be effective. You need to feel at home. All right, why don't you walk us through some of the key design features of the 10X? Number one is the engine. We selected Rolls-Royce to fit our Falcon 10X. The name of this engine is going to be the Pearl uh, 10X, the Pearl 10X for the Falcon 10X, and we strongly believe that Rolls-Royce has the right competency, the right technology in order to design this engine to be fitted for us. You also uh, uh, have a different kind of wing too. Tell me about that. The wing is the key for performances of an aircraft. So the new wing is going totally uh, designed for uh, manufacturing in uh, full carbon uh, capabilities. For the efficiency of the aircraft, the performance of the aircraft, it's a must. You've been doing this for a long time, always have been a pioneer in this. Now, you talk to your customers. They said they wanted a lot of range, a lot of comfort, they wanted flexibility, and you said to your team, do all that. Uh, that's a tall order. Have they uh, exceeded your expectations? We put the bar very, uh, very high uh, at the top, and uh, I would like to thank our teams for the work they have been produced up to now. And I would like to encourage them for the future because there are new steps coming. Something like this takes a tremendous financial commitment. I know your shareholders and the family itself have been uh, very supportive of this project. So how can you, we do that without the support of our shareholders? So I really want to thank our shareholder, in particular the Dassault family and with the holding company which has been supporting us uh, for a long time, and especially when we are designing new birds. All right, thank you, Eric, uh, for that good introduction. We'll have you back shortly at the end of the program. Joining me now is the Executive Vice President for Civil Aviation at DASO, Carlos Brana. Carlos, a pleasure to see you again. Pleasure to see you too, Miles. Let's talk about the range of this remarkable aircraft. 7,500 uh, nautical miles. For all intents and purposes, there's practically no place on the planet you can't get to nonstop, right? That's correct, Miles. Uh, actually, 7,500 nautical miles is a huge distance to cover. But you're a New Yorker, so let's, for example, take off from New York. 
Then you will cover uh, all Europe, most of Africa. Uh, of course, you can go up to Bangalore. And if you go the other way around, you will reach uh, Shanghai or Beijing with no problem. Now, let's take off from here, uh, Le Bourget, so close to Paris. Then we will cover all the Americas. We can go even to Santiago de Chile. Or uh, we can go east, you know, to uh, Tokyo, Shanghai, uh, Beijing. All those areas will be reached very easily. And we can even go to the uh, northwestern part of Australia. Let's go now from Hong Kong. So from Hong Kong, you will cover North America, Europe, of course, uh, Africa. And, uh, and of course, all the uh, extremists uh, without any problem. Let's not forget our South American friends taking off from Sao Paulo. Then they will go to North America, of course, but they will go to Europe, uh, the Middle East, and a good portion of Asia and, of course, Africa. So this will make for some very long legs, 15 plus hours in some cases. Uh, raises the challenge on creating a comfortable environment for both the passengers and crew. Uh, what have you done about that in this aircraft? Yeah, you're right, Miles. Actually, one of our main topics in this particular aircraft was to redefine uh, both the experience of the passengers but also of the pilot. Our intention for the passengers is clearly that they, their flight be seamless so they can exit the plane and are ready to the next step of their trip. Of course, one of the key things is the size of the cabin itself, uh, and this is bigger than ever. That's correct, Max. Actually, our uh, customers are always pushing us for more comfort. That's what uh, we did, you know, when we uh, designed the 6X, and uh, we have, with the 6X, the biggest cross-section of any purpose-built business jet. But for the 10X, we felt that would be better for our customers to enlarge the cross-section in order for the passengers to feel more comfortable. So cross-section is important, but of course the length of the cabin is key here as well. It does give you a lot more flexibility in how you can configure it, right? That's right, Miles. Actually, the uh, standard configuration of the, uh, of the aircraft is provided with a four lounge cabin. But, you know, just by moving the uh, dividers in each cabin, you can either shrink or extend the length of the cabins, of the sections of the cabins. So uh, even you can cancel one uh, room and say, OK, we have a three lounge cabin. Uh, it will all depend on the needs of the customers. And of course, we will adapt to what better fits their needs. What else have you done to address comfort and productivity? And we associate, as you mentioned, comfort and productivity. What alters productivity is fatigue. And fatigue is a result, for example, of the noise level, the result of the cabin pressure, or, for example, even the, uh, the purity of the air. So, for example, now the uh, cabin pressure is 3,000 feet at 41,000 feet. This is extremely impressive. The noise level will be uh, at least, uh, meaning better than the one we have already on the ATEX, which was already the reference in the, in the uh, industry. We have also the purity of the air, which is in fact uh, provided through uh, the last gener latest generation of filters, and uh, the air itself will be extremely fresh. So the goal really is for your customers to arrive prepared and really at their best. That's correct. Our goal is to make sure that when they exit the airplane, they are fresh, rested, relaxed, and they can go to the next step of their trip. In addition to the spacious size of the cabin, you've spent a lot of time looking at novel ways to appoint it. Tell us about that. Yes, Miles. Uh, our cabins are designed with a very distinctive styling. And uh, our designers, you know, who already won an award uh, with a 6X uh, interior design, raised the bar again to give a feeling of uh, spaciousness which is clearly unprecedented. And I think we are fairly well positioned to say that we deliver the genuine French touch. Naturellement. Oh, your French is improving. Nice. Working on it. Why don't we take a look inside? That's a great idea, and let's uh, discover this beautiful world we created.
Bravo. What a beautiful environment Dassault has created. And I'm here at Le Bourget, at the showroom for Dassault, with the head of industrial design for the company, Agnès Gervais. And yes, congratulations. Thank you very you much. You must be proud. Yeah, I am very proud. I am just one of a team, but I'm very proud of what we did. Something like that takes an awful lot of work, of course. And I know at Dassault, it always begins with a conversation with the customer. What did you hear from your customers? They are looking for comfort. They are looking to be able to do whatever they want to do all the time. So continuity and a seamless experience. You need to be able to work, dine, rest in the aircraft the same way that you do underground and we created an apartment, a penthouse in the sky. The ultimate penthouse. Let's start where you start, at the entryway. Now that is a spacious place right mm -hmm. there. When you think about the entryway in a business jet, oftentimes these are cramped confines. Well, this one isn't. In this aircraft, the main thing is space, as you said, and that's especially true that it's important in this entryway. The crew rest that you need for those long flights can also be used as a sitting area to chat. You know, like in kitchen, it's the best place in an apartment. <laughs> and then on the other side, you have what is exactly a um, high-end kitchen. Those two windows provide plenty of natural light. We have a huge countertop to be able to prepare the best meals. With the oven, the standard chiller allows you to prep all the food you need on board for those long flights. Let's move into the main cabin and take a look. This is spectacular, of course. That feeling of spaciousness is uh, hard to describe, isn't it? So we worked with the basic aircraft to push the walls even further away. But we also increased the size of the windows. You have huge windows. All the space has been utilized. Let's talk a little bit about the tables in particular. I know you spent a lot of time innovating on those. We reinvented completely this area. We want every customer to be free all the time. So to be able to work, dine, do whatever they want without asking the neighbor if they can pull up the table. You can also bring them together, of course, to have a nice meal together. But you also have a provision for much larger dining. So this is where you could have a really a, an airborne dinner party, a full up dinner party, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. And explain why this offers more flexibility for people who are sitting at that table. With a high-end kitchen, you can have a five-star meal. And in this area, it's really like in a restaurant. Everyone has his own seat. And because of this huge fuselage, you have the room to track your seat and be able to get in and out without disturbing your neighbor. Let's go to the aft cabin and see what's in store there. I'm sure you've got a lot of good surprises there as well. If you choose the entertainment lounge, you can have a huge screen on top of a credenza. With this sensory design approach, we are emphasizing the experience. So surround sound is optimized by the upholstery on the wall. Everything is made so that your experience is the best. It's really very flexible. You can use all the different area depending on professional needs, personal needs. You can even have a, a bedroom if you wish, so. All right, let's look at the bedroom. A lot of space to play with here as well. Yes. If you want to extend the bedroom, you can make it a suite, a master suite. You can have your own bed, 50 inch or 60 inch, if you wish to have a queen size bed. You have a full height closet and a single seat, if you wish to add functionality so that you can dine, rest, work. So it's basically a private apartment inside the private apartment, it's your suite, with the ensuite bathroom. Well, let's see that, shall yeah, we? Yeah, sure. Well, wow, that's, wow. that's- Wow, look at that. That's, That's quite a big space, exactly. And a lot of light, natural light. Four windows in this area. And in this shower, you can really stand. I mean, it's a huge shower. One of the things you have to watch out for when you're designing one of these cabins is when you build in a lot of technology, it can quickly look obsolete. Technology moves much faster than cabin refitting. Absolutely. So how do you guard against that? We decided to integrate as little hardware as possible so that the software can change much more easily. You can control the light or everything through some little screen on the bulkhead, like at home, basically, or also through your personal device on an app. It's just much more flexible. The cabin is really a smart cabin, very technological, but we want the customer to not even think about it. It just needs to be there when you need it. 
From the penthouse to the flight levels, let's take a look at some of the aeronautical engineering that went into this aircraft to make it so flexible, to make it a Falcon. You know, Carlos, one of the hallmarks of Falcons is their ability to fly into smaller airports and get people closer to their destination. You just told me about all this amazing range and performance capability for this aircraft. Have you been able to preserve that flexibility? Of course, Miles. We started with the design of the wing. So uh, the wing, since uh, the beginning, had uh, two constraints. The first one is to be very efficient at uh, high speed. And remember that uh, we cruise Mach 90, for example, but also to fly very safely at low speeds in order you know, to land on short runways. So uh, the first constraint, we solved it by uh, increasing the sweep angle of the wing. And uh, the second constraint, we solved it also by expanding the span of the, of the wings. And the span uh, accumulated with the flap and slat combination that we have uh, in all our Falcons allows us you know, to fly at, uh, safely at very low speed to land shortly. Of course, when we respected those two constraints, we could have re resulted in an uh, uh, increase of weight. And uh, in order to solve that, constraint, we changed the material in which we built the wings to go from metal to carbon fiber. Something that we already did uh, in, uh, in the wings on the Rafale fighter. So that's why we, we got all the experience and expertise, which makes us very comfortable to use that technology in the Falcon 10X. It's also over the years made you comfortable to use digital flight control systems. You've always been the leader in this category in adopting these uh, sorts of technologies. Uh, what have you done in the 10X to stay ahead of the competition? We have introduced the digital flight control system in the 7X, and then in the 8X. We have accumulated more than 900,000 flight hours. So we feel extremely comfortable with that technology. We are now including the control of power in the flight control system. So the 10X goes a step further, doesn't it? That's correct, Miles. So the engineers, thank you, Carlos, by the way, the engineers and uh, who designed the Falcons also designed the Rafales. And so it goes with the test pilots, same group of people. Let's climb aboard our virtual 10X and talk to two of them who will be leading the test campaign. Hey, I'm Philippe Duchateau, chief test pilot for Dassault Aviation and 10X project pilot. Hi, I'm Sébastien Dupont de Dinchin, lead project pilot for Falcon 10X. Welcome into this virtual cockpit. Let's take a tour on the new feature we propose to you on this fantastic jet. Our objective is to drastically reduce workload while still being able to adapt to the challenges of future air traffic control. Fully proven, on the Rafale fighter jet, a smart throttle will control both engines with a single throttle lever. It will vastly simplify thrust management, including during noise abatement or reduced thrust takeoff modes, and even in the unlikely occurrence of an engine failure. Dual head-up display including Falcon Eye award-winning CVS system, will be proposed as a primary mean for controlling the aircraft. The digital flight control system will offer new features like a fully automatic recovery mode, which, by just pressing a button, will bring the aircraft back to straight and level flight from any position. Interaction surfaces are vastly increased with four extra displays and new access modalities like multi-touch on all displays. This aircraft is due to fly for many years and regulation may change. The level of automation will allow us to have one pilot flying the aircraft while the other one is resting in the cockpit. The size of the cockpit has been designed to receive a full flat seat that will offer better rest opportunities. Having pilots alternatively resting during low workload phases like cruise means better cognition and alertness during denser phases like approach and landing, and therefore 
allow us to reach an unprecedented level of flight safety. Short fields, tremendous range, adverse weather. All of those safer than ever and with an even better flying experience. And what about the engines on the 10X? Dassault, for the first time, has selected Rolls-Royce to power one of its business jets. It's a natural choice. After all, Rolls-Royce is an iconic company with a reputation for peerless excellence, just like Dassault. It is a match made for the heavens. Rolls-Royce builds the legendary Trent engines, which hang on the wings of several Boeing and Airbus airliners. The company has long hoped to partner with Dassault on a Falcon. For a long time, we have sought to power one of their business jet products. We're really all at Rolls-Royce, I think, very proud of being selected by Dassault for their, their flagship product. Rolls-Royce is a pioneer and a dominant player in the category, powering 3,600 business aircraft for more than 37 million hours so far. For the Falcon 10X, Dassault challenged the iconic engine maker to make a big biz jet even better. Basically what an engine supplier these days is do is he invests most of his money into a higher efficiency, a lower noise, and obviously reduced emissions. That's always the case. So, you know, that's, that's what we picked for a living and we love it. And that's what we did on this engine family as well. Rolls-Royce developed its Pearl family of engines at its state-of-the-art facility in Berlin. It begins with the Advance 2 core demonstrator. And then that becomes the heart of a family of Pearl engines. Then somebody like Dassault comes along with a specific specification, and we say, yes, that core can deal with that specification. The Advance 2 contains several blisks, or bladed discs. Forged from a single piece of titanium or friction welded, they are much lighter and cause less drag. It also uses materials and coatings that weren't available 10 or 20 years ago. And many turbine blades are derived from a single crystal meaning there are no grain boundaries. All of this makes the blades more heat resistant and able to produce more thrust. We truly believe we have the most efficient core across the business aviation sector. And if you wrap this with the high performance, low pressure system, you can just derive an engine which is uh, superior of 18,000 pounds of thrust which is what Dassault is asking for and which is needed for such a superb combination of a great new aircraft and our engine. The combustor is 3D printed to save weight and reduce emissions, and the advanced composite nacelle is thinner than ever. The Pearl 10X will offer a 5% improvement in efficiency compared to its predecessors. Oh, it's a massive deal in our world, and of course, it sits alongside the improvements that the aircraft manufacturers like Dassault are making in terms of aerodynamic performance. So the actual performance of the aircraft, the combination of Dassault technology and expertise and Rolls-Royce technology and expertise creates a great step function improvement in performance for the end customer. And it's designed to run on 100% sustainable aviation fuel. It's already had a thousand cycles of testing over more than 500 hours on stands. And it will be mounted to a modified 747 for in-flight testing. Rolls-Royce says it will have no problem delivering the finished product on time. Yes, absolutely, we are convinced. We will nail the milestone in this program. And I believe we convinced us so this package is just the right one because we have been so mature from the get-go. In the end, the purchase of a Falcon is not so much an acquisition as it is an acceptance into a family. The Falcon family takes care of each other all over the world. And one of the most important places they meet is Little Rock, Arkansas.
After a Falcon jet leaves the nest in Marignac, it flies straight here to Little Rock, Arkansas. This is where the green planes are fit and finished inside and out. Paul Florek gave me a walking tour. He is the senior VP of sales for the U.S. and Canada. This is the newest facility here, right? It is. It's the newest completion facility here in Little Rock. This hangar is now filled with Falcon models 7X and 8X, soon the 6X, and eventually the 10X. Usually, before the aircraft even gets here, the cabinetry is being made in various shops around the facility. Very high-tech shops. Their craftsmen have been here for years and years. There's a lot of handcrafted work mixed with high technology that goes into completing Falcon aircrafts. There are aircraft here destined for Asia, the Middle East, Europe, and the Americas. It's really a company of the planet, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, there are Falcons in 90 different countries. We have factories and support just about everywhere a Falcon can go. The corporation has customers globally. Falcons are a global machine. And uh, it's a really unique balance, a really interesting balance of different cultures. And at the end of the day, the product is uh, the result of all the best of all of that. You talk to a lot of customers and potential customers. I have. Is there a huge demand out there for the 10X? Yes, we, we absolutely believe there is. The response has been overwhelmingly positive so far. And we're pressing on. And we're back now at Le Bourget with Eric Trappier. Uh, Eric, some closing thoughts from you. And first of all, what a year we've had. It's hard to describe what we've all been through. And yet you remain um, pretty optimistic about business aviation. Uh, tell yes. me about that. Yes, I strongly uh, believe that uh, business aviation is a solution to support economy worldwide. Big, why? Because all the executive uh, of the companies, the VIPs, they want to travel in a very safe way. They want to save time. And the business aviation is really the answer. So I strongly believe in the development of the business aviation in the coming years. And with vaccines becoming much more available around the world, uh, we do see light at the end of the tunnel, don't we? Yeah, vaccine should be the solution in order to smooth down the effect of such a virus. But we have to know that we will have to live for a, a long time with virus, whether it is a COVID-19 or some other. So it's also good to have a, a business jet in order to, to fly uh, safe. So this year has been quite a year for you in the midst of all this. You had the rollout of the 6X and uh, now this announcement. Uh, what does this say about your commitment to civil aviation at Dassault? Well, as you know, the company uh, is based on two legs. One is military, one is uh, civil. And uh, we expect uh, the civil aviation, the business jet aviation, to, to really be a success in the future. And this is why we invest so much uh, money with the 6X and with now the 10X. So it's really something in which we believe and we want to develop really the civilian aviation uh, in the coming years. And the 10X really takes you to a whole new level, doesn't it? The 10X will put us at the top of the business jets and will put us again, this is what we like, at the top of the uh, Falcon worldwide. That is a familiar place for Dassault and the Dassault family. This really honors the tradition and the inspiration of the Dassault family, doesn't it? Yes, it's part of our DNA. And uh, really, uh, we strongly believe that the spirit of the family still live with us. Just want to add something is, uh, as you know, Olivier Dassault uh, disappeared uh, last March, uh, tragically, and uh, I just want to have a thought for him. Uh, he would have loved to listen to this 10X announcement, and he would have loved in the future to fly the 10X. In the end, it's always about family at Dassault, isn't it? Yes, for sure. Thank you very much, Eric. I appreciate it. And I look forward very much to seeing the 10X 
transition from an augmented virtual bird into an aircraft made of aluminum and composite. And we, of course, will keep you updated as the program progresses. I'm Miles O'Brien, reporting from the Bourget in Paris. <laughs>